Who the Hell Is is a new book series on the world's greatest thinkers, presenting their ideas in an accessible, engaging and jargon-free way. Today we're going to be talking about the psychologist B.F. Skinner's philosophy of radical behaviourism. But first we will introduce Skinner, look at what behaviourism is and explain the practices used by behaviourists to understand learning processes. If you'd like to go to any area directly, please use the chapters in the timeline. Who is B.F. Skinner? And what is radical behaviourism? B.F. Skinner was an American psychologist and behaviourist who invented the philosophy of the science of behaviour. Known as radical behaviourism, Skinner's philosophy wasn't so different from previous forms of behaviourism as put forward by John B. Watson and Ivan Pavlov. They all agreed that the environment plays a far greater role in moulding human behaviour than had previously been suggested. They also agreed that experiments should focus on observable external actions if psychological science is to be truly objective. But Skinner's radical behaviourism redefined behaviour to include everything that an organism does, including thinking, feeling and speaking. This is what Skinner meant by the term radical, that everything an organism does is a behaviour. The foundation of behaviourism is the practice of classical conditioning, which is a basic learning process. What is classical conditioning? This was first studied by Ivan Pavlov after he observed that the instinctive response of dogs prior to being fed is to salivate. The dog's reflexive reaction to salivate is called an unconditioned response, as it is unlearned. The stimulus which causes the salivation is the sight of meat, and this is referred to as an unconditioned stimulus. Classical conditioning builds on this by pairing an unconditioned response with a neutral stimulus. Pavlov designed an experiment to find out if salivation in dogs could be triggered by specific external stimuli. He did this by pairing the unconditioned stimulus, e.g. meat, with a neutral stimulus, e.g. a buzzer, which he would sound shortly before giving the dogs food. He discovered that once the buzzer had been sounded a few times before feeding, the sound of the buzzer alone would be enough to cause the dogs to salivate. Pavlov's key discovery was to show that this process of learning by association, once firmly conditioned, was sufficient for the once neutral stimulus, the buzzer, to produce the response, salivation, even in the absence of the unconditioned stimulus, food. The neutral stimulus had therefore become a conditioned stimulus, producing a now conditioned response. The problem with classical conditioning, as Skinner saw it, was that it explained all new behaviour as being ultimately based on pre-existing responses, or prior learning, in this way. For Skinner, this was far too simplistic to be a complete explanation of complex human behaviour. He believed that much of behaviour is in fact spontaneous. Skinner's answer to the problem. Skinner began by drawing a comparison between the role that might be played by apparently spontaneous behaviours and that played by genetic mutation in Darwin's evolutionary theory of natural selection. Applying similar ideas to the behaviour of a rat within its lifetime, Skinner proposed that a range of apparently spontaneous behaviours may be performed by the rat, unrelated to any prior events in the environment, and that those behaviours which have positive consequences, such as enabling the rat to eat, reproduce or avoid danger, will more likely be repeated, while those which have negative consequences will diminish. In this sense, there is a survival of the fittest behaviours within the lifetime of the individual, rather than a survival of the fittest genes over generations, as Darwin's theory concludes. Skinner called these behaviours, which were unrelated to any prior event, operants, and the process by which these behaviours, which lead to desirable consequences, are more likely to be repeated as reinforcement. So while Watson and Pavlov saw behaviour as being under the control of earlier events, Skinner believed that behaviour is under the control of later events. So how did he prove it? Skinner introduced a process of learning through reinforcement, which he called operant conditioning. He began by inventing a box with a lever, which became known as the Skinner box. The design was simple. If a hungry rat placed inside the box pressed the lever, a food pellet would be delivered to the rat via a glass tube. However, in order to realise this, the rat would first need to press the lever, which could take a while as the rat explores the new environment. Once the rat does press the lever, then the food pellet delivered would act as a reinforcer, a consequence that increases the chances of the rat repeating its lever-pressing behaviour. 
In the same way that reinforcing a hungry rat's behaviour using food pellets increased the rate of lever pressing, Skinner also discovered that this process could be reversed. By halting the delivery of the food pellets, the lever pressing would diminish. Skinner called this loss of a previously conditioned behaviour, extinction. Imagine how this might work with humans. How long would people continue to work if their employer stopped paying them their monthly salary? How long would they work in the hope that they might be paid before realising that they were working for no reward? Skinner went much further than just studying rats. He set out to explain the variation and complexity of human behaviour through his concepts of shaping, chaining and rule-governed behaviour. But those are for another video. If you can't wait that long, then you can read all about Skinner and his radical behaviourism in Who the Hell is B.F. Skinner by Tom Buxton Cope, available on Amazon or via our website at whothehellis.co.uk. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like it. And to catch all our new videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.